This is Deptford in South East London, and we are here on the Crossfield Estate to uncover the truth behind one of the most extraordinary archaeological finds of this century. It was first discovered on the estate more than two decades ago, and in this time has continued to confound and baffle experts over its origins and authenticity. Until now, it has remained a mystery that few have ever begun to solve, and a puzzle where the answers lie thousands of miles away from the confines of a suburban council estate and the civilization within it, as I shall reveal. We begin our excavation here, on the path which hundreds more have trodden, a road that until now has led them nowhere except to this brick wall. What age did this come from? What does it mean? Who in any case is Elliot Gould? Jerk? Maybe. But like everything else, it needed to be proved. It was then at this juncture that I decided it would be wise to converse with some of the residents of the Crossfield estate, who I hoped would be able to shine a light onto this mystery. I met with two male species, Charles Hayward and Paul Astle, who were carrying their shopping across the car park when I posed the question, who did they think was responsible for writing the graffiti? As I understand it, this gentleman here told me <laughs> that there was this boyfriend, A, and a girlfriend, B, and another man, C, and girlfriend B runs off with other man, C, and in a boyfriend C is referred to by boyfriend A as Elliot Gould. has been referred to as this person, as Elliot Gould, for quite a long time. He's because he's got curly hair yeah, and yeah. whatever he maybe Jewish or whatever it is. And so he finds that his girlfriend's gone off and spent the night with boyfriend C. And in a fit of pique, as written up on the wall, Elliot Gould is a jerk outside her flat. That's what you told me. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's what you told me. <laughs> they had scrawled oh, the oh, surface, oh, 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 oh. but what lay underneath? <laughs> Later I found Ron Chadwick, an artist and resident of Crossfield, who offered me an entirely new theory behind the graffiti. Uh, I've got this theory about it. it was, um, I was in the pub down the bird's nest, uh, having a few drinks, and uh, I came home to sort of closing time. And uh, I, uh, I was watching a bit of telly and I decided to have a gin and tonic, you know. So I went out into the kitchen and uh, I started to prepare this gin and tea and I noticed this uh, quite odd, really sort of quick flashing but it's, it's quite smooth, but it's sort of a bit like a strobe but with a quite smooth line 
And uh, oh, it looked really odd, you know. So I went out to the balcony. By the time I got on the balcony, I just got the tail end of this sort of like a light stick, which uh, I didn't think really too much about. I didn't go down to investigate it any further. I just thought, well, maybe I had too much to dream of them. <laughs> and uh, I came back into the flat and uh, just carried on a few drinks. Uh, a few people came around a bit later on. And I sort of mentioned it, but totally forgot about it. In the morning, uh, a, a friend of mine came around and uh, was driving out the estate. And I just thought this Elliot Gould is a jerk. And I thought, oh, that's really odd. You know, sort of relating back to the evening. I told a few people, people about it. But anyway, I've got this theory. Now, I, I've, been, I, I've been told that the, uh, the Americans have put um, a satellite up in space with a certain information, uh, pa uh, pictures of paintings, videos, films. And uh, I've got this, uh, this sort of uh, idea that possibly that uh, it was picked up on. And uh, I believe that they, they put mash into this, into this uh, satellite. Mm. And I have this theory that it was watched, and uh, possibly with other films, with Eddie Gould, and, mm. and uh, that um, <laughs> that uh, someone someone saw this character and got a bit of a beef about him. Right. And uh, I, I I imagine that I don't know whether there's any more or, or Eddie Gould was a joke over over London, over the rest of London. But I I got this theory that uh, it was done by an extraterrestrial. To understand the mind of whoever was responsible for writing Elliot Gould as a jerk in white house paint all those years ago, I needed to consult an expert. Graffiti artist Naveed agreed to talk to me about this ancient art form on the condition he would not be filmed. What was it that made you uh, start writing graffiti? Well, it was a culmination of um, frustrated thoughts that built up. I felt the desire to express myself to other people, but as I was not in regular employment, I was unable to um, produce an advertisement or something like that, or for the television or for the wall, to, so that everyone for public consumption. So I felt as though I had to go out and break the law and write on walls and um, various other things. What sort of things did you write? Well, quite banal things as well as things with a political message such as fighting against prejudice and social injustice poverty, homelessness and um, the kind of sickening greed of some individuals which denies other individuals a decent standard life And was this something you would do every day or would you have to be in a, a mood to do this? No, I'd have to be in a mood yeah. I think you have to be cautious about going out and writing a spray can because obviously you may get arrested. Have you ever been arrested for? Uh, almost arrested, not quite. But I was given a warning which prevented me from continuing what I was writing. So I wasn't actually arrested, I was warned. That if I continue to write, then I would be fined in court. What do you think of the graffiti on some of this estate, such as Elliot Gould as a jerk? Who do you think might have written that? Well, I think someone who's obviously familiar with his acting and his films and has been propelled to write that kind of thing because they've obviously been disappointed in some way by what they've seen. So they wish to um, express themselves and say he's a jerk. I think it's quite esoteric in a way because to me, for example, and I imagine a lot of residents of this estate, would not understand who was who Elliot Gould was. I knew he was not alone, though would we now know as much about ancient Greece if it wasn't for Elgin? How much knowledge would we have about the pharaohs if Carter had not found them? I don't know. With this thought, I started digging. I began at Ritz, the first of a dozen video rental libraries. None had any reference on Elliot Gould and few staff had ever heard of him at Greenwich Cinema, less than a mile away from where the graffiti is written. 
I asked them if they had any plans to screen any number of Gould's 27 feature films. Hey, it's Gould's. No, okay. Will you be showing um, Muppet movie? Okay. Um, Escape to Athena. Um, Lady Vanishes. You've got no plans to show any of their Gould's. I was facing a brick wall. I was close to giving up. The break eventually came with Bill Clift, a musician who resided at Crossfield between 1976 and 1981. For a drink, he agreed to tell me his version of the story. Okay, the version I heard, and uh, I've no reason to doubt its veracity, is that um, a young woman was uh, alone in a flat in, in Deptford on the Crossfield estate and uh, was watching a film with Elliot Gould in it. And for some reason, it became more and more irate. And she, he was just uh, annoying her, um, for reasons best known to herself. And uh, she couldn't stand it any, any, anymore. She grabbed a tin of paint, went outside, and just daubed this big message on the wall. Elliot Gould is a jerk. And finally, do you think Elliot Gould is a jerk? Uh, I don't think Elliot Gould is a jerk. Apparently, Michael Aspel does. Apparently, he says he's one of the worst interviewers, the interviewees that he's ever experienced. But, in fact, I like Elliot Gould. I liked him in M.A.S.H. And I particularly liked his version of uh, Philip Marlowe in The Long Goodbye. I think he was brilliant. There's a piece of graffiti in the Crossfield Estate in Deptford, South East London, that says Elliot Gould is a jerk. Do you agree with that? No, not at all. Elliot Gould, Elliot Gould's a star. I met with cinema manager Nick Robson in London's Leicester Square, who had insisted on putting the record straight on Elliot Gould. And as a cinema manager, um, do you have any plans to screen a, a season of Elliot Gould films? Well, do you know, we haven't at the moment. I mean, there are people we, we'd like to get into seasons. Elliot Gould certainly would be high on the list, but... Do you think there's a public, do you think now with the 70s revival, I think, do you think <coughs> demand? We need a, a lot of leaflets. You know, we need to get the Elliot Gould fans in. And, you know, it's not as easy as you might think, but I'm sure if we put a season on, we, we would have queues, queues around, well, around there anyway. And do you think you could get Elliot Gould to turn up to Oh, well, well, if he was in the country, he would turn up like a shot. It's not always in the country. But supposedly one of the worst films ever made is uh, Escape to Athena which also stars Elliot Gould, amongst an array of other actors. Mm. Um, what do you think of that cast? Interesting. Uh, it was a wonderful cast. Uh, Roger Moore was in it, David Niven, of course, towards the end of his career. And then the marvellous people, Donald Pleasant, James Garner, James Coburn played the Australian, Richard Attenborough had a marvellous role killed in the end. Uh, excuse me, don't you mean the Great Escape, uh, Richard Attenborough? The, the Great Escape? Escape to Athena, will I, I, I'm sorry, yes. Dickie Attenborough. Well, well James, James Gar... Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas, thank you. Telly Savalas was in the movie. Claudia Cardinale, of course. And the other great, um... Great, um... um Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould, Gould was in the Elliot film. Elliot Gould made the film, right? Uh, he, was jo he was in the film, of course. And, uh, and these other great stars. A wonderful film. Wonderful. And, I believe, Sonny, Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono, yes. And, of course, his wife, uh... She wasn't in it, but uh, Sonny Bono, Sonny Bono is in the film. It's currently unavailable on video. Do you have any idea when they may be bringing this out? I believe it's coming out on the budget label. I, I don't know this for sure, but certainly if it does, I will be in the queue. And you'll be showing it at your cinema <laughs> when your Elliot Gould season comes <laughs> out. If we have our Elliot Gould season, which I'm certainly pushing, but uh, that's what I'd like to see, yes. Escape to Athena. It's a really great movie, one of my favourites. Somewhere, someone had to be watching an Elliot Gould film, but finding them was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Gould had stopped making films by the end of the 70s, and unlike Flair's Sister Sledge or John Cassavetes, few wished to revive him, and his comeback seems indefinitely postponed. Can you see uh, any occasion in the future where Elliot Gould's career may be resurrected? I think there are one or two cases um, in the movies where actors, having had an initial tremendous high voltage start uh, and then an awful lapse, a, a, an awful period in the wilderness, have come back. Where had Gould been in the 80s? Indeed, where was he now? Film critic Philip Jenkinson 
explained the rise and fall of Elliot Gould. He was a jokey figure. I mean, he loved playing the fool. He, he was a jerk. <laughs> And suddenly, of course, when you get a bit older, when you get into your 30s, and particularly after a revolution like the 60s, where anything and everything could happen, and you could let anything hang out, and people went for it, uh, suddenly you're in the much more austere 70s, and you're no longer a kind of cuddly character who audiences take to their bosom. And I think this really happened in a very big way with him. I mean, he really didn't know who he was. Uh, what his role was in the cinema, um, and really what kind of parts he could be playing. So increasingly, I think he took on this um, this jokey, self-deprecating kind of uh, role, where he became a bit of a buffoon. What happened to him in the eighties? He's been working for Disney. He's made a lot of kids' films, and. Um, I don't think very much to his credit, he's also been involved in the Muppet films, which uh, are not really regarded highly by anybody, except maybe five and six-year-olds. Perhaps, perhaps those are the kind of people now who love Elliot Gould. Perhaps it's not the adults or the teenagers of any age anymore. Perhaps it's the five and six-year-olds who love him. At the start of this program, I promised to reveal to you who was behind this and whether or not it is true. Was it then A, the rejected and jealous boyfriend? Was Elliot Gould just a name for a man who looked like him, who could have by fate looked like Burt Reynolds, James Kahn, or a dozen other stars at that time? B, Ron Chadwick's extraterrestrial theory offers interesting debate. However, since my interview with him, he has admitted that he confused MASH with a film that Gould does not appear in, Kelly's Heroes. He now admits neither he nor the alien saw MASH, but instead a film set in World War II about the robbery of 14,000 bars of Nazi gold. C. The despairing viewer offers perhaps the clearest motive. It is probable the viewer had been watching Capricorn 1, made in 1977. However, back then, Gould was yet to star in the remake of The Lady Vanishes, George P. Cosmatos' Escape to Athena, and all three Muppet movies. So in 1978, the world is yet to see the worst of Elliot Gould. These are my findings, and now it is up to you to decide. One question though, is Elliot Gould a jerk? Yes or no? My excavation in Deptford finished. It is time for me to move to another site of modern archaeological interest and to once again lift another stone to another story. One thing, however, continues to puzzle me about the graffiti on Crossfield, and that is how today's screen legends have escaped the fate dealt to Mr. E. Gould. Why have we stood back and let the likes of Chevy Chase, Bruce Willis, Steve Guttenberg, Dan Aykroyd, Robin Williams, Gene Wilder and John Candy invade our cinemas and our living rooms. It is here that lies the real mystery and perhaps the biggest crime. Action. Do you think Elliot Gould is a jerk? No, not at all. Elliot Gould. What was my name? Elliot Gould is a star. There's something Elliot Gould is a no, star. No, not at all. Yes, sir. Don't, don't, don't worry, we're just talking no, to you. Right. I, I was actually testing say, yeah. the fact that right. people are going to chat. The sound is excellent. Come Let's on, go. we're on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a piece of graffiti in the Crossfield Estate in Deptford, South East London, that says Elliot Gould is a jerk. Do you agree with that? No, not at all. Elliot Gould, Elliot Gould's a star. 